Hey everyone, so I messed up and didn't know that using hot tap water is generally not recommended for cooking or drinking with. And because of that, I took the original version of this video down where I said to use hot tap water. Plus the hot tap water wasn't all that important to the overall technique anyway. Using a much smaller amount of water is kind of the important part. So this is a re-upload, so if it's your second time here, you know, you can go about your merry day. But if this is your first time here, stick around because I think you'll like this technique. I have been absolutely loving it for making really fast pasta dishes like alio e olio or alfredos like you'll see in this video. So hope you guys enjoy the video. I've recently changed the method of how I cook my dried pasta. With this method, I no longer boil a large pot of water to cook my pasta and I'm able to get dishes like this in just 15 minutes. Let's talk about that. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. So I've recently been kind of testing around with different pasta cooking methods, and over the past month or so, I've kind of finalized on the technique that I've been using for basically all of my dried pasta. So what we're gonna do in this video is cover the technique that I'm using, tell you why that this method works, and then number three, I'll give you all a recipe that you guys can try out and see if this method is something you wanna use as well. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. This is the cooking method that I've been using. Step one, add pasta to the pot. I'm using 227 grams or a half pound. The shape doesn't matter. Step two, add water to the pot to cover the pasta or for filming purposes, just add it to a container. Pour the water over the pasta until it completely submerges it. No extra necessary. Set the pot on the burner over high heat and immediately stir so the pasta doesn't stick. After 30 to 60 seconds, stick a thermometer in the pasta water. If it reads at least 180 degrees Fahrenheit, set a timer to cook it based on the package for your desired doneness. Echo. For macaroni, set I used five minutes. five minutes. Then let this cook and stir it occasionally to prevent sticking until that timer goes off and the pasta is done. Once the timer is up, drain the pasta for whatever you were using it for, and there you have perfectly cooked pasta in a total of 6 minutes and 28 seconds. The traditional way of cooking a half a pound of pasta by filling up a large pot of water, waiting to bring it up to a boil, and then cooking the pasta took me 13 minutes and 32 seconds total, meaning this method was 53% faster for the same product, al dente pasta. It sounds like a no-brainer to switch this method, but if you were like me, I bet you have a few questions like, aren't you supposed to use more water? Why did you start the timer at 180 degrees Fahrenheit? And won't the pasta stick? Luckily, I have Harold McGee and Kenji Lopez-Alt to help me answer these questions. From On Food and Cooking by Harold McGee, we learned that when pasta is cooked in hot water, the protein network and starch granules absorb water and expand. In order for pasta to be cooked al dente, it needs to be done at enough heat with enough water for enough time. With traditional pasta cooking techniques, these values are 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or boiling water, about 10 times the amount of the pasta in water. So for 227 grams of pasta, this is 2,270 grams of water. And then the cooking time is whatever is denoted on the package of dried pasta you are cooking with. Typically, this is somewhere between seven to 12 minutes, depending on the pasta shape. However, two of these three values are not the lower bounds for the pasta to be cooked al dente. These values are the cooking temperature and the amount of water. So let's figure out those lower bounds. From the food lab by Kenji Lopez-Alt, he notes that 180 degrees Fahrenheit is the lowest temperature where proteins will start to denature and starches will absorb water. We now have our lower bound needed to cook pasta, which is why I started that timer when the water reached 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's talk how much pasta water. Again, from On Food and Cooking, it is noted that pasta's absorption is around 1.6 to 1.8 times its weight, and this is the lower bound for the amount of water that we need. We use 1.8 times of water for an example. So if we have 227 grams of pasta and multiply by 1.8, that means we need at the bare minimum 409 grams of water for it to cook properly. Compare that to 2,270 grams for traditional techniques, and it's quite a big difference. Now, in practice, I don't bust out the scale. Instead, I just fill enough water to completely submerge the pasta and go from there. 
Using this little amount of hot water is really what saves the time, as I can use a much smaller pot and less water takes less energy to heat up. And here's another little bonus for using less water. Since the pasta releases starches into our water, we create a much higher starch pasta water solution, which is perfect for binding sauces like cacio e pepe, aglio e olio, or the Alfredo recipe that I'll show you at the end of this video. Now, there are a few things to point out with this method. Number one is that you need to use less salt as the majority of the water and thus the salt is absorbed in the pasta. So just make sure you're using less than you normally would for a full pot of water. Number two is that pasta noodles stick when they are allowed to rest next to each other after they are added to the cooking water. Now this can happen in a large pot of water or a very small one. However, since we are using way less water, the pasta is likely going to be touching. So make sure you keep an eye on the pasta and stir it multiple times in the first few minutes of cooking and you'll have zero issues. Number three, this method is not great for fresh pasta as fresh pasta doesn't have much structure and absorbs much more water than dried pasta. So stick with a full pot of water for those. Other than that, this method is a true winner. So my friends, free yourself from the drudges of lugging that massive pot of water and use just enough water. Let me show you a quick 15 minute recipe that you can use to put this method to practice. This recipe is just a riff on a classic three ingredient Alfredo, except I added garlic, peas, and basil for a little more flavor. Let's start with the pasta. Add half pound or 227 grams of penne or whatever you want to use to a skillet. At the sink, add water to the skillet to completely cover the pasta. No more is necessary. At the stove, turn it on high heat and add a little pinch of salt. Stir the pasta to help avoid sticking, and after 60 seconds, the water should be up to 180 degrees, so set a timer for eight minutes, and continue to cook while stirring occasionally until the time is up. After eight minutes, you can see the penne is still slightly underdone, and that's exactly what we want. Pour off a little bit of the pasta water into the sink, but keep a good bit in the pan as well. Back of the stove, add in 56 grams or four tablespoons of butter and melt it down and stir to create an emulsion with the water. While the heat is still on, add in the Parmesan cheese and stir vigorously until that parm starts incorporating and getting creamy. Then you can add the garlic, peas, and basil to the pasta and continue stirring. If you notice the parm is getting kind of stringy like this, the heat is likely too low, so just turn it up and keep stirring and it should melt down. You can also add a couple cranks of black pepper and serve it in a bowl, and there you go. Simple Alfredo with some fresh ingredients for flavor, and it all comes together in about 15 minutes. All right, everybody, so that is why I have stopped boiling my pasta water. Meals like this are coming together in like 10 to 15 minutes for me now versus, you know, 20 to 25, which, you know, may not seem like a ton, but over time that does add up. Maybe you got home late from work or you're out golfing or something and you just want a quick meal that you can just do without having to order out and with really basic ingredients. And that's why I've been absolutely loving this method recently for things like this Alfredo. Maybe I'll mix a tomato sauce in there. Um, Stovetop mac and cheese you can use with this method. It's really just a killer method. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys wanna try this out. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Hey everyone, you made it to the secret section of the video where I'm giving away this Unicoda 16. So it's the exact same one that I've used for some of my videos on the channel. And basically what happened was Uni accidentally sent me a second one of these and I was gonna return it and then I thought, hey, would you guys mind just if I gave this away for reaching 200,000 subscribers? And they were completely on board. So huge shout out to Uni for, you know, accidentally messing up and then both of us turned it into a positive which is super cool so to actually enter the giveaway what you have to do is go through the gleam.io link down below that has all the rules and everything the only way you can enter is by accessing through that link and then through that link you'll notice there are three ways to enter via instagram um, visiting uni's page or visiting my twitch page but again it all has to be done through the gleam link i'm gonna let it run for like four days until august 30th um, it is only open to mainland us so 48 states just for shipping and stuff we had to we had to kind of cut it there so for the next giveaway we'll make sure we'll do something for your international folks but if you want to enter go through that gleam link down below and one of you guys are going to be making some pretty delicious pizza 
So that'll wrap it up for the video. Thanks for sticking around and uh, hope you guys enjoy the giveaway. Peace.